MMP Presents MMP Mansion Episode 2 The Origin Story <sighs> Hey guys, Kevin here, aka MMP. Oh, I must have dozed off here by the fire last night after the fireside chat. Well, anyways, welcome back for the second episode of MMP Mansion. Last time we went on a grand tour of the new uh, palatial grounds, so I thought this time around what we might do, uh, I think I mentioned it last week, is take you on a tour, show you some of the other places outside of the mansion. This is the original world that I had set up my vanilla playthrough in, so some of my old bases and stuff like that, it's still intact, it's out and about, so why don't we take a step outside and try to find our way. Oh, Steven. Hey, what's going on? We were just heading out. Sir, I need to speak with you for a moment. Uh, does it need to be right now, Stephen? I was about to take these people to the old bases. Sir, it's about the wither. It started running wild close to base number two. Something really must be done about it. He's been out in that desert for weeks, Stephen. I think he can wait a little bit longer. Sir, please, the situation is getting serious. I don't- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Stephen, listen. The day I take advice from you, you old worrywart. Alright, so if we walk out the front door here, now I'm gonna run for a while in this direction. It's gonna be a long journey to get back to the original base, but alright, let's go. Here. We. Are. We made it. So I know that was a long journey, guys. I, I'm sure you're probably tired, as tired as I am, but, well, we're just gonna have to buck up and uh, find that second wind so that we can keep going. Now, this is the original base. When uh, we started this world, I spawned here. So as you can see, it's pretty quaint. You know, we had some humble origins. It wasn't always living in the mansion. We had some, uh, some beautiful farms going, some carrots, all different crops. Had a couple of dogs hanging out at this place. So we, we kind of borrowed right into the side of a mountain here. We take a step inside. Uh, we had, <laughs> I had originally started playing on this map with a few different friends. As you can see, we had, uh, we had quite the party going on with uh, Little Dongo, Giant Dongo, Raptor Gull, that was my original name, Loud Game Noises, uh, Anonymous, that must have been Mike, but um, yeah, I, I needed some kind of world that I could use to play on my vanilla playthrough, so I just kind of continued on with this one, and uh, it got to where it is now. Um, so down here we had uh, some of the mines and different things like that. You know, pretty pretty standard stuff, not too much to show off here. Uh, but if we take a step outside, this is uh, this is one of my my crown jewels right here. You've probably seen something similar to this before. I forget exactly whose tutorial it was that I watched on YouTube to figure out how to build this. It was one of the big redstone guys, whether it was Mumbo Jumbo or one of them. And what it is, if you don't know, it's basically an iron factory. <laughs> the way this works, the game mechanic is set up in such a way that if, uh, if there are several villagers and there are enough doors, yeah, let me, uh, am I in creative mode? Can I fly up? There we go. So I can give you guys a better view. Um, so there are so many doors around the outside of this thing and what that is basically doing is tricking the game into thinking that there is a village here and because there's so many villagers, that it spawns iron golems up in this top layer and then they push into the center, the water pushes them down, they fall down into that lava pit where they burn a gruesome iron golem death and we reap the benefits by stealing all of their iron and it gets filtered down into here. So you can see the, uh, the iron and the poppies that also come from the iron golems. There's actually supposed to be some kind of a filter system built in so that the, um, the poppies wind up in one of these chests and the iron is completely in a different one. This has worked out really well, you know, in survival mode when I don't have access to all of the materials that I need for building tools and armor and all that great stuff. Uh, this is just an unlimited source of iron. So it took a while to build, you know, obviously you can't fly around in survival mode, but uh, it was definitely worth the time. Uh, it's, it, it was the hardest part about this. Oh, oh, what was that? Oh no. Oh my god, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh boy, this one, this villager. He's tweaking out. Are you gonna settle down in there? They're, they're, my, they're getting too rowdy. They're getting a little too rambunctious in there. Settle down, guys. Settle down. I know you're excited. You haven't seen another face besides each other in a long time. All these people are out here to see you, but quiet down, alright? Oh, ooh, there's one in there now. Sweet. They actually don't spawn very often. It's tough to see it happen. 
Um, I just usually show up, collect my iron, and ignore all of the death that has happened here, because I don't want to be responsible for it. But um, I thought it was pretty cool. I actually got to see one. So, like I was saying, yeah, the hardest part about this was actually getting the villagers up into this little glass box. Um, the way I had to do it, uh, again, I'm probably saying stuff that a lot of you guys already know, but uh, it was really exciting for me as I was learning this game and kind of figuring, ah, there he goes. I'm just not going to look at it. It's kind of freaking me out. Um, so, yeah, I'm probably saying things that a lot of you guys already know, um, but, you know, it was really exciting for me when I started learning the game. So, uh, with the, the zombie villagers at nighttime, when all the bad guys come out, if there is a zombie villager and you feed him, what is it? You have to hit him with a splash potion of weakness and then feed him a golden apple, and then he turns back into a normal villager. So I had to just basically squat here for several nights in a row and wait for zombie villagers to show up, try not to get killed, try to lure them through an elaborate staircase up into this glass box, drop them down inside, and then if I already had one villager in there, make sure they didn't kill each other and just turn them all into at least two villages and we can breed them from there. So it was a project, but it was pretty cool. You know, I like this side of Minecraft. Uh, where you can, you know, build crazy machines like this. And it's not really a hack of the game, but it's it's definitely thinking outside the box. Speaking of outside the box... <laughs> oh, there's another golem. Sweet. Alright, so this was, this was great timing. We saw some interesting stuff here. So, that was pretty much my pride and joy of this first base. But, like always, we eventually outgrew it and it was time to move on. So, uh, this track, we're not actually going to go there, that would take up time, and all that really does is that goes into one of the strongholds that I found. Some tracks down there that goes to a stronghold so that I would have access to the end. But the one that I do want to show you is over here, kind of this little side compartimento over here to the base. Perfect timing, get in out of the rain, brush ourselves off. Whew. So if we jump into this nether portal, Another fun fact, I'm going to keep spouting off fun facts. You guys are probably get sick of them because a lot of you probably already know, but for those who don't, if they are new to the game like I was, travel through the nether is actually kind of a shortcut to travel through the overworld. Uh, each block in the nether counts for about eight blocks of movement in the overworld. So for example, if I came through this portal, walked ten blocks, made another nether portal and exited back into the overworld, even though I only traveled 10 blocks in the nether, I'll pop out 80 blocks further away in the overworld. So it's really great for making shortcuts. In the second base that I built, I actually just ran. I just hoofed it. And there was a whole bunch of stuff that I had to get through. There was like oceans and all kinds of crap. So there was no way I was going to make that journey every time. So in order to get back and forth between base number one and base number two, I installed this little railway system through the nether. So let's go on and take a little ride. Oh, please don't bug, please don't glitch. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still playing this on my old system. I actually got a new PC that I set up uh, last night. I spent a few hours, I was up pretty late putting the PC together, but it's not quite ready for gaming yet. Uh, so, in the new videos we're going to have coming out this week, uh, things should look a little better quality, a little smoother gameplay, uh, better quality graphics, so looking forward to that. So we made it on our little train ride, and we're going to pop out through this door and make it to base number two. So at this place, a little rainy, uh, so not the best day for tour, but you know, it's okay. So as you can see, this place, we spruced it up a little bit better than the, uh, the first one. Um, so we'll take a little walk up back here. I started a little uh, villager farm in here just for the sake of trading, but uh, I forget exactly what happened. Th they didn't make it. They didn't make it. So we've got some pumpkin farms and some sugar cane, some different things going on here. Uh, sugar cane for making the books and the enchantments and such and funness. So if we step inside, try to keep things pretty organized. Um, all of my different materials and treasures. Now, pretty standard tools. The one thing that I do really want to show you here, oh, actually there's two things. There's, there's, there's three things. I keep forgetting all of these. Um, put this trash in. I don't know all these quotation marks that came as like a result of using the mods or something, I think. But uh, this trash can, it's actually a, um, 
it's sitting on top of a whole bunch of hoppers and it's really annoying to me whenever we get a whole bunch of stacks of like gravel and useless crap that I'm never going to use and instead of jamming it into one of these boxes I installed this trash and it was originally really loud because of the redstone and the things that were moving so I wound up, let me see if I can open this up a little bit just to give you guys a peek without destroying everything so you can kind of see there's a whole bunch of hoppers that lead all the way down and it drops anything that's put in here into a burning pile of lava. So for example, if I had a whole bunch of cobblestone, I was down in the mines for a while, I came back up and I've got way more cobblestone than I know what to do with, I can just come over to this trash here and just dump it all in. And you can see it's starting to go down. You know, it's not instantaneous, but you know, there's plenty of space in here, you can just dump whatever crap and then walk away. And it all goes down through the hoppers and into the lava. So that was the first thing. Oh, I should show you upstairs too. I haven't been here in a while. I keep forgetting stuff that I want to show you guys. Um, so we've got our anvil. We've got our little enchantment room in here. So enchanting. So, if we keep going down into the depths, there's a couple of things. One of them's really cool. Here we go. So again, a lot of you guys might already know what this is, but it is a slime farm. You can figure out slimes only spawn in particular chunks. So once you figure out which chunks they spawn in, you can hollow out a giant place like this. And then the pumpkins are for the sake of keeping the place lit. Um, and then the different platforms are like different levels of ground that the slimes can spawn on. So, I mean, we can take a walk up here for a second. There's really not much else to show. It's just kind of a lot of the same. You know, you can see like this. Oh, I can fly, can't I? <laughs> miracle of flight so yeah we can see kind of like this yeah they should pop right into here we're not gonna see any right now they do take a while uh, but I, I did need to build something like this so that I could get slimes for the sake of I forget exactly what if it was for uh, I don't even remember what I needed the slime balls for oh maybe sticky pistons I probably needed it for sticky pistons last but most certainly not least <laughs> I'm excited for this one this one, I, I can actually brag about a little bit. You know, I'm not very good at Minecraft. I don't know a lot about it still. But this one, you know, it's it's not too shabby. All right, guys, we're coming up on it now. And here we are. Might not look like much on the surface, but this is pretty cool. Now, I was reading up on experience farms and things like that that you can build to try to rack up a whole bunch of XP quickly. Um, let me switch over into survival mode so that we can actually see the experience. Okay, so now we can see my experience level there. Um, hopefully I don't starve. I don't have any food on me. But I was reading up on uh, experience farms, like I was saying, and uh, there, there were different things that you could build, like crushers, like mob crushers. And I was looking around for a mob spawner, and I came down this way while I was in my mines, and I happened to find not one, but two. I found two mob spawners directly next to each other over here. There was a cave uh, cave spider spawner, and over here was a zombie spawner. So there weren't any real directions on how to link up two of them together. There was just like examples using the one, but somehow, some way, it was a miracle. I managed to funnel both of these into side-by-side -side mashers with just a single switch. So here, let me crack open this area right here just for a second so that we can take a peek inside. You guys can kind of get an idea of what's in here. Come over here, you can see there's the spawner. The whole room is filled up with water in just the right places, like just the right width and positions so that anything that spawns gets pushed down into that hole. And it's the same thing on the other side here with the, the zombie spawner. So just to give you guys an idea of the mechanics behind this, I've got this little um, this hatch door installed so that I can get down to access all the redstone and stuff. And it's been so long since I've built this, you know, I, could, I probably would do a terrible job trying to explain to you what I did down here. Uh, but there's a couple different sets of these hopper timers, which uh, those control how long the crusher is on for. Um, and I set them for two different lengths uh, because the spiders, I think, will die a lot quicker than the zombies. So I make sure that that masher is on for a shorter amount of time. The idea is just to get them down to the bare minimum of health so that you can quickly kill them either with your sword or preferably with like a splash potion um, just to wipe them all out at the same time. 
So let me see if I can make my way up here. You know, again, I could try to explain some of this, but I'd probably do a terrible job, and there are a lot better tutorials out there that I learned from anyways. So if you guys are interested in this, um, and you don't know, you can just search on YouTube for, like, um, mob XP farms, or mob smashers, things like that. And uh, if, if you can't find any, I'm pretty sure that Mumbo Jumbo and some of those other ones have some different good tutorials. But I can post links too if you guys need that. So guys, I want to show you uh, this this puppy in action. So I just quickly gave myself some um, splash potions of healing and splash potions of harming. It took me forever to figure that out. I was trying to kill both at the same time with a single potion and it just wasn't working. So I thought I was doing something wrong. I eventually figured out, idiot that if you want to kill zombies or other undead mobs with splash potions, you need to use splash potions of healing. Because they're undead, you need to somehow give them life to kill them by video game logic. So uh, the other guys, the spiders, you can kill with the splash potions of harming. So I'm gonna flip this switch here. These come on to let us know that the machine is on, it's active. Oh yeah, here they come. I'm just going to AFK for a few seconds and let these guys pile up, and we'll be back in a second. Alright guys, we're back, and we've got quite a bit more company, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this switch to close the gates, shut off the lights. Now I'm kind of afraid to press this button. Fingers crossed. Oh, there they go. Ow, it hurts. Ow. 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 At this point, if we go ahead and throw a splash potion of healing at the zombies, and one of harming at the spiders. Oh, looks like some zombies lived. Oh, yes! And I forgot to put it in survival mode again, idiot! And here comes the experience. Oh boy, we got bit in the process. Finish him off with another harming potion. So as you can see guys, we just went from about one experience level to 16 like that. I've actually seen it go even higher. You know, it's gotten to the point where I can't even see the screen. It's just so much experience flying at me. Had a lot of fun putting this together. You know, I I'm kind of a tinkerer like that. I like the redstone sort of stuff as well. So uh, it was really fun and it's been really useful too. It's uh, made getting some better enchanted tools and things like that a lot easier. I can just come down here and scoop up some experience whenever I need it. So that's pretty much the tour of the old bases. You've seen base one, you've seen base two. I'm just going to take you back up to the surface here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of the place. We'll just step outside here so we can say goodbye. What? Steven? Steven, what's going on? Sir, I couldn't let you come out here alone. Steven, I'm fine. What are you doing here? The Wither, sir. It's drunk with power. In your absence, it started to believe that it owns this area now. Please, sir, it's not safe. Well, if he thinks this area is his, come on, Stephen, let's finish this fight. We need to go. We can return later when we're better prepared. Later? Well, why not prepare here and fight now? Let's get this over with. That's why. <gasps> Steven! 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 We gotta go! Oh my god, he's tearing the place apart. You were absolutely right, Steven. I'm sorry I didn't listen. Let's get out of here. I'll prepare. I'll come back later and take care of this. So everybody, oh, you Minutemen out there, you take care until next week. We'll figure out a way out of this. At ease, Minutemen!